This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to At Calvary, a media ministry of Calvary Baptist Church in Watertown, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Bob Loggins, and it is my prayer that your heart and life will be encouraged, blessed, and challenged through the music ministry and the preaching of the Word of God on today's broadcast. Well, good evening. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Bob Loggins. I serve as the senior pastor here at Calvary. Uh, This is our Wednesday evening service. Uh, We've pre-recorded our service. We had the Maranatha Baptist University Chamber Singers Choir with us, and uh, we did this earlier. We pre-recorded so that we could share this with you this evening. You know, God, in a wonderful way, uses music to minister to our hearts especially when we're going through tough times like we're going through uh, here at Calvary, here in Watertown, and really all across our world with this virus. And so I know that as you watch and you listen, you will be ministered to in a very unique way with the Maranatha Baptist University Chamber Singers. And so I trust it will be a blessing. It's pre-recorded. We did that ahead of time. In fact, I mentioned in the service, many of our students are traveling right now, and we're going to miss having them around here. But these songs will minister to your heart, and so thanks so much for joining us here at Calvary on our live stream broadcast. We want to welcome you to Calvary Baptist Church. Thank you so much for watching our program this evening. Uh, Here at Calvary, we've decided to pre-record in an effort to slow the spread of the uh, coronavirus that's really spreading across our country. Uh, Tonight's concert, then, is actually pre-recorded. And we're thankful for the technology that allows us to be able to serve you in this manner. Our announcements are sent out via email, and so if you're not currently receiving the announcements from Calvary, you can do so by just contacting me, bloggins at cbcs.org, and I'll be happy to put you on our list to be, be able to receive our various announcements. We encourage you to continue to be in prayer for Jerry and Marcel Kowinski. Uh, their 44-year-old son, Jeremy, was promoted to heaven last Friday. There is a visitation up in Minneapolis this weekend, but then the funeral service, the celebration of his life, That's going to actually be uh, postponed for a little bit later on uh, once this uh, virus is over with. Also, I'm going to ask you to be in prayer, if you would, for Gail Renz and their family. Uh, Gail's mom passed away this morning, and if you'll keep their family in prayer, I know that they would appreciate that so very, very much. Uh, Tonight, we have the opportunity to have the Maranatha Baptist University Chamber Singers with us under the direction of Dr. David Ledgerwood. And they're going to come and minister to us at this time. Please listen as they sing, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Thank you, Pastor Loggins, for this opportunity to uh, present our concert. We trust it will be a great blessing. Songs were chosen to be uh, spiritually uplifting. We pray that they would do that. Uh, through our hearts and ministry uh, this evening. So thank you.
where he was employed as a sexton or a janitor at a local and very small church. It was at that church that the future Dr. Tindley collected every book that he could find, went to a local synagogue and learned Hebrew, and took as many courses as he could at his local seminary and learned Greek. And he began to work his way through ministry until... He eventually came back to that same church at Philadelphia and became the main pastor, where he had once been a janitor. And he wrote this song titled, Stand By Me, to be a comfort to some of the African Americans in his congregation who were going through such difficult times. And this song has been a real comfort to me in the last week and a half. I think it's safe to say it's been a very tumultuous time, especially for me and for other people all around the world. And this song just reminds me that Christ is always near and he has promised to stand by us. He has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And it just reminds me that the Lord is Jehovah Sabaoth or the Lord who is ever present. This is stand by me.
God is so good to give us that beautiful home, that hope that we have of heaven. And we don't have to wait until then to receive his good gifts because every day God is giving us fresh mercies. He is showing his love to us in new ways. He is truly the good father and he gives us every good gift. He is so faithful. He is great in his faithfulness.
certainly been blessed by the music that we've already heard this evening. Uh, we do want to be praying for these choir members. Uh, they have prepared for weeks and months to go on a choir tour. They're supposed to be on their way out to Colorado, but obviously with all that's been going on with the uh, coronavirus, they had to cancel their tour. And um, even as you watch this this evening, many of them are on their way home. Uh, Maranatha Baptist University is had to cancel their face-to-face -face instruction. Uh, Maranatha is actually one of the leaders when it comes to online instruction, and so these students will be following up for the rest of the semester with their online instruction. Uh, Pam and I had the wonderful privilege, the really incredible privilege, of traveling with the chamber singers on several of their tours. And so I've asked <clears throat> several folks who've traveled with the choir to share some of their thoughts of what it was like to be in chamber singers and to be with Dr. Ledgerwood. Anna Heisinger states, the spiritual emphasis was amazing. Everybody encouraged each other. We shared verses and our devotions with one another. Ministering in singing in songs in the church was special. Uh, they loved having the choir, the churches did. Uh, ministering in the houses was a thrill, she writes. Andrew Brewer, he writes the following, I was in 35 states, both oceans, 
hundreds of churches and schools, thousands of lives, all for free, tuition excluded, that is. He said, I had the privilege of touring with chamber singers and Dr. Ledgerwood from 1995 to 1998. Over those many miles, God impressed on me several things. A recognition that ministry has its lighter moments. A Mickey Mouse around the world for Dr. Ledgerwood. Uh, a satisfaction in knowing our voices and presence were used to heal hurting ministries. Finally, a personal desire to serve him as a Christian school teacher. Andrew says, I remember being in Logansport, Indiana. Uh, I was there with him. I remember this, Dr. Ledgerwood, we were there. Logansport, Indiana, in the spring tour of 1996. After ministering in several churches and Christian schools, he writes, I felt God's call on my life to change my major to mathematics education. This represented a significant shift in my life. I had planned to complete my education at Milwaukee School of Engineering and graduate with a degree in architectural engineering. However, God used circumstances, choir tour, and people, Dr. Ledgerwood and my fellow chamber singers, to direct me to him. I will forever be grateful for the time that God allowed me to be part of the chamber singers. Heidi Brockler writes the following, Chamber Singers was certainly one of my favorite college experiences. Seeing so much of the country and meeting believers across the nation helped broaden my horizon and prepare me for my future ministries. One of my favorite tour memories was learning that even our placements in homes were by divine appointment rather than random coincidences. I distinctly remember one home where the family had specifically prayed that one of the girls would stay with them that would be a math major. They were homeschooling their daughter in Algebra II, if I remember correctly, and were at wit's end trying to find someone who could help them understand. The mom nearly cried when she realized that I was the answer to their prayer. My tour partner visited with the rest of the family in the living room while the daughter and I did about two hours of math at the kitchen table. I'll be ever thankful for the lessons learned and the friendships made during my time in Chamber Singers. Uh, Josh and Amy Hahn, they wrote recently, we are serving God in Park Rapids, Minnesota with our five children. We met and became friends on Chambers Tour to Mexico, and we thank God for every moment since. You know, as I think about Chambers Tour and my opportunity to travel with the choir as well, I'm thankful for the godly influence of Dr. Ledgewood and those who traveled with us. Uh, their life-touching life and the mentoring was really invaluable. I remember many years ago, we met Dr. Ledgewood's family. Had a wonderful time after his concert and after his service, just being able to talk to them and get to know them, and then later on having the opportunity to see his dad come to know Christ as his Savior. It was just a wonderful, wonderful blessing. I think of those lifelong friendships that we developed while, while in choir, and really they continue even to today. The churches we were in, the music, it's like those words, they, uh, they never seem to leave you. The homes we stayed in, the traveling, the sightseeing. Uh, we sang in all types and all kinds of places. It was my privilege to travel with chambers all the way from uh, uh, Niagara Falls down to Mexico and everything pretty much in between. Uh, promoting Maranatha, serving the Lord in choir. It's really pretty much an awesome privilege. And so in just a moment, the choir is going to come back and they're going to continue to minister with us and for us this evening. We encourage you, while they're coming onto the platform, uh, please be praying for them. As I mentioned earlier, we're pre-recording this, and so many of them are actually going to be on the road on their way home. And so even this evening, as your family gathers together for a time of prayer, uh, you're watching the concert, uh, in a few moments we'll look into the Word of God, would you pray for these members as they travel? They're going to pro provide us now a festival of praise. Psalms 95, 1 through 4 says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of his hills are his also. And the psalmist, psalmist continues um, throughout the rest of the psalm, speaking and giving numerous reasons why I should praise the Lord. 
As we sing our next song, you'll hear these words many times. Simply put, this song implores us to worship the Lord. When I stop and think, I truly have so many reasons to worship the Lord. Yet every time we sing this song, it reminds me how many times I do not worship the Lord as I ought to. I'd like to ask all of you, whatever's going on amidst the craziness and the confusion, can you set that aside for the next few minutes, finite minutes and join us in worshiping the Lord? The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, who are alive and remain, shall be caught up with them, together in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This next song talks about the glory of heaven and the joy of believers as we leave this world. As believers, we have the hope that one day we will spend an eternity with God in a perfect place called heaven. Rejoice with us as we sing the morning trumpet. Oh, when shall I see Jesus and reign with him above and shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning? And from the flowing fountain drink everlasting love, and shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies, when I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies, when I hear the trumpet sound in that trumpet, the trumpet, the trumpet, the trumpet, the trumpet. Now I am a soldier, my crown is on me torn. When I hear the trumpet sound in that trumpet, the trumpet, the trumpet. He's given me my orders and he trains me in his form. Till I hear the trumpet sound in that trumpet, the trumpet. Oh, shout! With glory I shall mount above 
above the skies when I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies when I hear the trumpet sound in that morning, that morning, that morning, that morning. When shall I be delivered from this painful of sin? And shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning, that morning? And with my blessed Jesus drink endless pleasures in? And shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning, that morning? Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies. When I hear the trumpet sound in that morning, oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies. When I hear the trumpet sound, sound in that morning, 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 in that morning. In that morning. When peace flows like a river, and peace attendeth my way. These are some of the words of the song from It Is Well. Uh, this song is very familiar to us, but it was written by a man by the name of uh, Horatio Spafford. And uh, Spafford was a successful lawyer in uh, Chicago and married his lovely wife, Anna. And together they had five, five children there in Chicago. But sadly, in 1871, uh, one of their young children at the age of four died. And if you know your history, later in 1871, that was the year of the Great Chicago Fire. And it burned um, uh, huge portions of Spafford's um, industries and, and things um, along the waterfront that he owned there in Chicago, and it financially ruined him. And um, he, was, he was grieving with his family um, after the loss of their son, the loss of most of his business. Um, and it was at this time that they decided to take a trip to Europe to get out of Chicago. And uh, for, for some business reason, Spafford had to stay behind in Chicago to take care of um, some, some little matter. So he sent his wife and four children on ahead um, to Europe, and he would join them a few days later. And uh, on the trip, um, on a French steamer, they, uh, they were rammed by a Scotch iron-sided tanker, and uh, most of the 300 occupants drowned, including Spafford's four children. Uh, his wife survived and later joined him, um, and together grieving, for the loss of their children and the loss of all that had come to them in the past few months. Um, they made one last trek across the Atlantic Ocean and uh, they were actually informed of the very spot that, they, that their children had gone down at. And it was at this spot, looking over the waves on the deck, that Spafford wrote the words to this song of It Is Well. So please worship with us as we sing.
Thank you so much to the choir. What a wonderful, wonderful message and song that they have shared with us in so many ways this evening. That last verse that they just sang, I need thy presence every passing hour. The 139th Psalm, we realize that God is everywhere present. And what comes to our minds when we think about God is really one of the most important things about us. Perhaps we need to pray that God would help us to be more consciously aware 
of his presence, of his abiding with us. We want to be passionate about his majesty. We want to be passionate about his glory. But when we know God for who he is, our lives are really dramatically altered. Because God is awesome. And God is present. And when we think of God's omnipresence, we know that God is knowledgeably and wholly present everywhere. There's no time, there's no place where he is not present. God is present at the same moment everywhere. He is always and everywhere at hand. And so the psalmist writes in Psalm 139 and verse 7, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? He lets us know that God's omnipresence is unlimited by space. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, thou art there. His omnipresence is undaunted by speed. If I take the wings of a morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. His omnipresence is unaffected by darkness. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be a light about me, yea, the darkness hideth not from thee. But the night shineth as a day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. And so practicing the presence of God, abiding with him, can and really should make an incredible difference in every one of our lives. The conscious awareness of God's presence, it impacts us through, through salvation. Because we were created to glorify God. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And yet we know that our sin has separated us from God, for all have sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God, and yet Jesus paid our penalty in our place on his cross, satisfying the demands of divine justice. God commended or demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he died on the cross to take away our sins. That's what the choir's been singing about this evening. And salvation is by grace through faith. And so the conscious awareness of God's presence it impacts us through salvation. But I think it also impacts us through supplication or prayer. Here's a question. Do our circumstances ever cause me to ask this question, where is God? We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And so God's omnipresence is a wonderful argument for answered prayer. Because if you think about it, prayer is the spreading out of our helplessness and that of others. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, before the loving eyes of God our Father, our God who knows us, our God who understands us, our God who cares for us. And he tells us to come boldly unto his throne. And his, his omnipresence assures us that we always have his undivided attention. I think a conscious awareness of God's presence, it impacts our service for God. Do I trust the reality of his presence even when I can't feel it? The psalmist said, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. When we live with an awareness of the truth of God's presence, it gives us a heart for service. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And so this truth calls for faithfulness in our service because God is here. He's present with us at this moment. 
And that provides wonderful security. Jesus said, are not five sparrows sold for two farlings? And not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Do I fear and fret because of a lack of confidence in God's awareness of what's going on around us? The psalmist reminds us that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And so practicing the presence of Christ reminds me that God is watching over us. He has said, I will never, ever, ever leave you nor forsake you. And so true safety, it's not necessarily the absence of danger or difficulty as much as it is God's presence and God's power in every situation of our lives. Here is comfort. God is always with us. He says in Matthew, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And what God makes, he sustains. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. And so that knowledge of God's presence, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to feel and to know his presence, and that brings nothing less than sheer happiness. Practicing the presence of God. Whatever's going on in your life, certainly what's going on in our society, in our country, can I just remind us this evening, God has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. He's always present, he's all-powerful, he's all-knowing, and he's all-loving. He is our amazing God. Father, we thank you so much for what we've been able to hear and see and watch this evening. Thank you for Maranatha Baptist University. Thank you for Dr. Ledgerwood and for the Chamber Singers Choir. And Lord, we have been blessed, we have been encouraged we have been challenged as we've watched and listened this evening. So as they come back for one, one more opportunity to minister to us in song, Lord, open our hearts to who you are and what you've done and what you're doing. And for that, we'll be grateful in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor we would like to finish with a final song. Metaphorically, the journey to the end of our lives is like being on a road. Staying on the road requires absolute obedience to the commands of God. However, many of us, various times of our lives, we stray from that road. And our song speaks of one who was recounting that. And yet, even in the midst of the straying, the voice of God calls, come back, come back, come back. Back to the road that would eventually lead you to your heavenly home, the road home.
Once again, we want to say thank you so much for joining with us. We'd invite you to join us live stream at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. God bless you. Have a great evening.